Hello and welcome to another edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for almost 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Axon was started almost 100 years ago out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. It's that same passion that drives them today. With a vision for a better experience for both farmer and dealer, they set out to create a better way to move more iron. When you partner with Axon, you get immediate access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. Axon carries all major brands and sizes of tires, wheels, and tracks. From custom colors and sizes to fully customized wheels, you can have the solution for virtually any problem today's farmer is trying to solve. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. This podcast is also brought to you by Valley Transportation. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. This podcast is also brought to you by Ag Direct. No matter how you buy your ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast Markets with Tony Laporta. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping dealers move more iron for the past 100 years. For more information, go to axontire.com. Also, Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 or go to valleytransinc.com for all your trucking needs at Valley Transportation. Our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. I got Tony Laporta back here with me, and it's been a little bit since Tony's been on, but with the uh, craziness in the market right now and uh, the amount of money that's flowing out of the outside markets going in to the commodity markets, uh, interest rate talks, geopolitical stuff going on, I felt like it was a pretty good time to get Tony back on to talk about uh, his perspective, what he sees happening. So, Tony, how you been, man? Uh, fantastic. It's, I mean, you know, a little bit of a little bit of brain dead after a week like this. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, that's that's a hell of a roller coaster. Yeah. And 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 here's and here's a very interesting, and you'll be shocked at this because I was shocked at it. I do I do daily numbers, weekly numbers, monthly numbers. Do you know we closed higher on the week? Are you serious? I didn't. I would yeah. not have guessed that. No. The, the Dow gained four hundred and eighty nine points. Wow. I know. Nas uh, S and P's up thirty four points. Nasdaq plus sixteen, and and the the, the lagger the the weak one was the Russell down nineteen points. Wow. I know. That's, I know. That's crazy. That's yeah. After the way the week started out and the way you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday went, you wouldn't have guessed that. That there, but I guess on Monday there was a big rebound. You know, it went they were down five percent or something like that, and it rebounded back up four hundred four hundred points or something like that. And but it, immediately the next day it went, it just tanked again. So what, what are you and seeing? If you, and if you think about this, I mean, the S and P's closed up thirty four points on the week, but mm-hmm. today they rallied one hundred and fifty points, one hundred and sixty points from the lows. So. So we were we were really having a bad week when, when we woke up this morning. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. As you take a look at what happened this week, and all you know, you got the Russia Ukraine thing, you got the interest rate thing, kind of, you know, the dollar had a big run up. You take a look at all these different factors out there right now. What what's your kind of what's your thought now as we kind of reset the table here, moving into next week? Okay. So so um, Powell became the Fed chair in February 2018. Right. And and his mission, he was on a mission to raise interest rates and reduce the balance sheet. And 
And, you know, the, the administration at that time did not want higher interest rates. They wanted lower interest rates. And Powell was actually ridiculed publicly, yeah. um, you know, almost on a weekly basis. Yeah. And, and But he made an announcement that he was going to do this in December of 2018. He was going to follow through with it. And, and the S&Ps, in a matter of <laughs> three weeks, went down 16%. And and Powell did a, a little backstep, mm-hmm. and and then and then we then we rallied, and you know until until COVID hit. I mean, we rallied for another about two years, year and a half, something like that. Yep. Anyhow, he has come out, and we basically got confirmation from from the the Fed meeting this week that he is going to raise interest rates and he is going to reduce the balance sheet, and and you see what's happened to the market. I mean, on a on a year to on a year to date basis, we have the Dow down four point three percent, S and P's down seven percent, Nasdaq down eleven and a half percent, and the Russell down twelve and a quarter percent. And and but why is he? Is is this going to be a you know? And you and you were well. You were only. I think I found out you were only three or four years old when Volcker <laughs> when Volcker took interest rates right. up to twenty two and a half percent. Yep. Um, but are we going to have another Volcker moment? No. Volcker at that time was. Um, they, you know, he was told like he, he was the biggest. You know, more on ever sort of thing. And forty years later, he's he's a star. You know, he he knocks he knocked inflation down, and and we have that kind of runaway inflation at the moment. Right. I mean, look at crude oil, eighty eight dollars a barrel. Yeah. The, the only thing I know about crude oil is when the price of crude goes up, the price of everything goes up. Right. And yep. and and he, and I don't and I don't think he's going to back away this time. I, I think I think Powell's going to do what he what he's intended on doing, and and you also have to remember the stock market. We we had the Greenspan put, then we had the Bernanke put, then we had the Yellen put, and now we had the Powell put, and I do believe that put has been taken off the table. And and the only way to truly get inflation down. They they really they really have to knock the stuffings out of the housing market, you know, knock the knock the stuffings out of a lot of things, and I think that's going to tip us into recession. And and what I know, the average decline on Wall Street during the recession is twenty percent. Yeah. So so he's walking he's walking a fine line at the moment. Right. So what's your anticipation when you start looking at interest rates and and, and those kind of things being? Going into that March time frame, obviously, I don't think they're going to come in and say we're going to raise it 1% or anything like that. But would you anticipate, you know, 25 basis points, something like that, in, 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 your, in your best guess? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 25, 25, and every meeting, 25. If, if he really wants to, you know, get the desired effect of, of knocking inflation down, mind you, 25 is not going to work. Right. And, and, and he may, and, and, you know, we still have to remember, you know, there were, there were predictions this year of four rate hikes. Right. So that's a total of 1%. Yep. So really what's happening with a 1% rise in interest rates, interest rates are going from historically low levels to historically low levels. Right. Yep. It, it, it's, it, it's a weird, it's a weird conundrum, I guess, if you look, you, if you know, put your head around it. Ask, ask, ask your dad, you know, what was this? What was this? My first mortgage payment was 12% for a mm-hmm. house, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I do believe, you know, the millennial out there is smart enough that they know, you know, because their parents have all told them, you know, oh yeah, my first mortgage rate was 12%, you know, mm-hmm. you're getting 3%. And all of a sudden there's a, there's a hint of, Interest rates going higher, and I think the millennials are going to start moving into the. Well, they are, they already have been, but I I think I I it's it's so funny. There's for as long as I've been involved in the markets. Uh, in 1987, during the crash, uh, up up until the crash of 87, the bond market and the equity market competed 
for investment dollars. And the bond market was was six to seven percent. Um, and if you could return six to seven percent on equities, you know they they competed for money. On um, during the crash of eighty seven, they sold their stocks and bought bonds. And that was the day, um, the 29th of October, 1987, mm-hmm. um, that the phrase flight to, co- flight to safety was coined. Yep. And, and since that time, it's changed a little bit. So now we've just had a, at, at one point we were down 12 or 13% in the stock market this week from the highs. And I kept on saying to my clients, where's the money going? You know, because it because it usually comes out of the stock market and it goes somewhere else. Right. And and if you look, it did not go into the bond market. Gold was back down to seventeen eighty today. It's not going in the in the gold market. Where's it going? It's going into commodities. It's yeah. going into it's going into the eggs, mm-hmm. and it's going into housing. I've I've received four to five text messages. Stroke. Um, uh, emails. How would you like to sell your house? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that going on right now. So that's you know, what is he? Go- what you know? Is he going to pull a Volcker moment? Not from the start. We'll we'll see. We'll see how high they want to get. I mean, look look what the beans did today. Yeah, <laughs> fourteen seventy. Yep. And and not backing off. Yep. So that that was my next question for you. Then, so as you take a look at some of the stuff, you know, obviously soybeans are the, the crush market's going crazy. This uh, biodiesel boom, this uh, you know, airplane fuel boom, those kind of things, where you're starting to see a lot of that soybean market kind of echo what happened during the ethanol um, run up in uh, whatever that early two thousands and what that looked like, and then you start looking at uh, the wheat situation uh, with with uh, Russia and Ukraine and, and the amount of wheat that comes from that area, and then you're messing with one of the major ports that, that uh, could possibly uh, get that stuff out, and then you start looking at corn and where's corn playing and all that. It seems like to me wheat and soybeans have a really good chance of taking off and running, and I think whatever happens on the backside of that corn is going to be just a follower right now and not really leading anything. Well, and and that's and that's just it. And and I, I grew up in Chicago. That's all I need to do is drive thirty miles outside of the city, and I have corn on one side of the road and soybeans on the other side of the road. Right. And and they've always, you know, this is my forty third year in the business. They've always kind of followed each other. Mm-hmm. And and lately, you know, the the beans took off. The corn is is going with it kind of, but the wheat all of a sudden has sort of lagged behind. Right. So, you know, the, the corn can't decide, you know, if it wants to follow the wheat well, some days or, you know, but front month corn closed at a new high for the move. Yep. And, and I think it finished at where is 636, something like that. Yep. And, and the contract high in March corn is 640 and a half. So, we're not that far away. Eth- ethanol, you know, I, I, I have a, a farmer friend who said last year he sold corn at $7 a bushel. And he says with ethanol the way it is this year, he thinks it's going up to $8 a bushel. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people say that. That, that $8 number has been bantered around quite a bit. So right. it'll be interesting to see what happens there. How how about and I don't mean to I don't <laughs> you're supposed to be asking the questions but but did you see on expiration what Nat Gas did yesterday? Yeah, I saw that. It had a had a pretty good jump yesterday. It traded up to seven forty three or seven thirty four. Yeah, and you know what that is? That's that's shorts. Yeah, that those are shorts getting squeezed. And and I have some I have some really heavy players in my in my chat room that, that I work in uh-huh. and, uh, and they've been long ung, you know, ung the, the, the Nat gas ETF. Mm-hmm. Yep. They've been long thousands and thousands and thousands of shares of it. And, and literally, you know, two to three weeks ago, the one guy said, well, I'm just dead in all those. Well, he's not, he's not dead anymore. <laughs> you know, right. and, yep. and it followed, it followed through today and he was long 5,400 of these. Wow. 
And at the lows, he was down about 400 grand. And, and, and he's, he's gotten out of 900 of them, yeah. but he's, he's keeping 4,500. He's like, Oh no, because he thinks, he thinks they all got out of their Feb nat gas futures positions yeah. and rolled it into March. Yeah. So well, if you look at what's going on in Europe, it's the coldest winter they've oh. had in 20 years or whatever. And, and it's just getting worse. And, uh, you know, Germany has, has hooked its wagon to, to the, uh, the Russian, um, natural gas pipeline because they haven't, they've, they've decided to shut down everything they can shut down in order to be more green and they can't produce their own electricity anymore. And they're so reliant on that. So, that coupled with what we have going on in the United States with natural gas, this this really is kind of a a big deal waiting to kind of blow up a little bit. And and I and I think it is. And and the administration has come out and said, okay, if you struggle with with getting natural gas from Russia, we'll start sending we'll start sending ours over. I mean, they're paying whatever thirty forty dollars per. I don't know how it's what's how it's priced. Yeah. Um, but ours is four fifty five dollars. Mm-hmm. So it's it's you know you know our good our our good friend Sean, you know he's been he's been beating on the nat gas table. And he has it's, been, no. and, and it's taken him a while to look good. But boy, he looks really good now. Yes, he does. He sure does. He <laughs> good, really does. And good for him. Yeah, good for right. him. He that's does right. a really nice job. You and him together do a really nice job. Well, I appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot, Tony. Well. Tony, it's good stuff, man. If uh, folks want to reach out to you and get more information about what it is you're doing, what, what's the best way to do that? Just just send me an email, Tony at TonyLaporta.com. And um, and and if you have a question or something, you know, put it in put it in the email, send your phone number, and I'll call. Right on. Okay. <laughs> it's easy as that. Yep. I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Make sure you check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also go to movingironllc.com for everything Moving Iron related. And Tony, I appreciate you being on the podcast again, man. It was, it was nice to see you again. All Be right. good. Thank you. And with Cheers. that, Casey Seymour, Tony Laporta. Let's move some iron folks. Out. You want to have a meaningful, competitive advantage to help sell more equipment. Whether you represent the sales, parts, or management department of an implement dealership, there's a surprising amount of complexity when it comes to tire, wheel, and track technology. Let Axon worry about that so you can get back to supporting your customers. Axon has leveraged years of experience to create a streamlined process that gives you a proven path to help today's grower and sell more equipment. The reach of their organization go back almost 100 years to the invention of the rubber tractor tire. Supporting agriculture is the number one driver of Axon from product development through sales and service. To find more or become an Axon dealer, head over to axontire.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all of your trucking needs at Valley Transportation. Our goal is to help you reach yours. And no matter how you buy ag equipment from a dealer, auction, or a private party, Ag Direct can help you finance it. You can even apply at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hard working people working hard for you.